Pastor Ryan, the Roving Giant here. I got some exciting news. I am heading out to hike the Northville Lake Placid Trail. Now, Northville Lake Placid Trail, here I'll show you the front of the map, goes 138-ish miles from Northville in the Southern Adirondacks all the way up to Lake Placid in the Northern Adirondacks. It goes through the most remote sections of the Adirondack wilderness. So uh, I'm super excited about this trip. Before I go, I thought what I would do is tell you guys a little bit about the plan, uh, bring you through a little bit of my planning process, uh, my preparations, if you will, and show you my gear. Uh, that way you know, I don't know, if you guys want to do something like this, you know what kind of gear you might want to bring. So I figured I'd go piece by piece. I'm using one of these uh, National Geographic maps. Works great, it's got all the stuff I need on it. But I'll start from my pack and I'll go piece by piece through what I have in my pack. So I got my pack here. I am a bit heavier than I wanted to be on this pack. The pack that I am using here is a Teton Sports, the Escape 4300. This pack has been with me on a ton of trips. Uh, it was actually originally my wife's and we ended up trading backpacks because mine was too small and hers here was too big so it worked out really well for the two of us. It is a 70 liter pack. Honestly, I'm using a fraction of that. I'm probably only using about 50 out of the 70 liters on this pack. I like to try to keep some stuff on the outside you'll see later. Um, it's a bit heavy, uh, five, six pound pack. So it's a heavy pack. It's what I got. And when you go out hiking, don't let the fact that you don't have the best gear stop. You can go out with stuff like this. I, I, I believe that these you can get for 70 bucks on Amazon. Don't let your pack hold your back <laughs> if you will but yeah how about we just get started into this pack i'll start from the outside in you see hanging here off the front is a solar charger it is also a uh, 2400 milliamp battery feely f-e-e-l-e-e -E -E. and uh, this should be able to charge my phone about six seven times um, and i plan on doing all my filming with my phone the phone that i have is moto x4 with a google 5 plan so this does great it's got wide angle it's and it does all my recording for all my videos that's my phone this is my charger to keep that phone going you see here i just got my uh, hunting and fishing license because i plan on doing a lot of fishing on this trip let me set the pack down and start talking through some of the gear. On the outside here, um, I am carrying a camp stool. Now this camp stool folds out. It is a hunting stool made by Kings River. Got it at Walmart for like six bucks, super cheap. Uh, it came with like a strap that I just cut off because I don't need it. I'm not carrying it on my shoulder. I'm carrying it on my backpack. This is a solid chair. I have gone through like three or four chairs and broken every single one. Uh, this is the first one that I'll have that has this flat bottom instead of pointed legs sticking out. That should be uh, really helpful for me because I always end up sticking into the ground and then laying crooked. Uh, it's not uh, a pleasant sitting experience. I end up breaking the chair. So I'm gonna try this. It's a little sturdier, it's a little heavier. Normally these, your camp chairs are trying to keep to around a pound. This is almost four, it's three and a half pounds. I think that it will do a great job for me and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of testing it out on this trip. Uh, on the outside of my pack over here, this is my tarp. I will show you uh, the more details on the tarp. I made a snakeskin for the tarp, I made the tarp. If you wanna know more about the tarp, I will talk about all this while we're on the trail. So watch the videos. Uh, yeah, so here's my tarp. In this little blue bag, is my stakes and my tie outs and my hammock suspension. Pretty much all the cordage that I think will probably get wet at some point. I like to keep stuff that can get wet on the outside of my pack. That way I'm not carrying it with my sleeping bag or my hammock, the things that I wanna be nice and dry when I'm sleeping. So, cord bag. Lastly, directly on the outside is this bottle. It's a smart water bottle with a little squirt cap, um, but I have taped over the label and written all over it. This is denatured alcohol. 
This is gonna be my primary alcohol for cooking. I made a little fancy feast stove that I'm gonna use and you'll see that featured on the trip. I'll show you where my cook kit is, but I'll show you the details of these things on the actual trail. But yeah, denature alcohol, I just made sure to mark this bottle up because it looks like tasty water when in reality, <laughs> it's alcohol. So if I drink it, I would get drunk really fast and then die. Don't wanna be drinking that. So made, making sure this bottle does not look like a regular water bottle. Denatured alcohol. Now, I'll go over to my little hip pouch here. This hip pouch doesn't carry much. I don't normally carry a ton of stuff in there, but I'm gonna have a small little compass and my pack cover. This is just a small little pack cover that I made myself out of membrane sil poly, or membrane sil nylon, and it's a super light, weighs nothing, packs down to, as you can see, very little. This will stay in my hip pocket so I can quickly deploy it, throw it over my pack if it starts to rain. So that's that. Next, we'll look at one of these little side pockets. No, I'm going to use this chair here. In this side pocket here on this side, this is my fire management stuff. So I got my knife, which is a K-Bar uh, BK-15. I use this as my bushcraft knife. I This thing has been through a lot. There was actually a time when I had this knife, I was batoning a piece of wood and it bent about that far. I thought the knife was shot. I thought it was done for. As soon as I came out of the wood, boing, snap right back into place. The thing is straight as an arrow. Love this knife. This has been a phenomenal knife. Has seen me through a lot of good stuff, a lot of great camping trips, and I plan to take it along as my main and only means of processing firewood. In the knife sheath, there is a little front pouch here for whatever you want. I happen to just keep a Leatherman in it. So that's here, Leatherman, just in case useful multi-tool. Along with that, I have just a Ziploc bag with my fire starting stuff in it. Inside here, I have a fire steel. I have some blue shop rags. Those things work great for getting a fire started. And I also have some of those wet fire squares that uh, they sell at Walmart. Those things work great, love them, so I'm gonna use them. They also don't weigh much. So that concludes that pouch. Now let me flip to the other side. <sighs> Tucked up on the side here, I have my fishing rod, just kind of wrapped up. Uh, the fishing rod doesn't weigh much, only about four ounces. Um, it's a field and stream, four to 10 pound rod, super light. I originally had it in a, like a tube case, but the case weighed over a pound alone. So I was like, forget the case. Hopefully I don't break any eyelets. Um, I'll try to be careful with them, but I just kind of got it all wrapped up together and it stays right in the side of my pack there. Now, if I open up this side pouch. This is gonna be mostly fishing stuff over here. Uh, as I hike along this trail, almost every, actually not almost, Every single campsite all the way along the North Philly Placid Trail has somewhere that I could go fishing. Now, I may not go fishing every single night, but I can go fishing every single night, which is awesome. So I've got a, uh, a reel here that packs down small. It's a Zebco 33 Micro. And this is what's cool about this. I, uh, I actually got this reel from getting one of those telescoping rods. Telescoping rod was cheap. I think the whole thing cost me like 25 bucks, but the rod just blew into a million pieces trying to pull a snag out, just shattered. Um, but the reel was still in great shape and it's smaller reel than any of the other ones that I have. It's lighter than any of the other ones that I have. So I'm bringing this one along to use with that field and stream rod. A pair of scissors for reaching down in taking care of uh, getting hooks out of fish that dig a little too deep. A small little tackle kit. I just got some spinners and some Rapalas and uh, just a couple of split shots, a small little stringer, super light. Trying to keep that kit really light. I'll be mostly fishing for trout in streams and ponds. Then just a small fillet knife for processing the fish because I plan to eat what I catch. And that concludes the fishing gear and that concludes the outside of the pouch on the sides. The last section of outside of the pouch is my uh, hood. In here I have a small electronics bag with uh, another charger, some USB cables, uh, stuff for keeping my devices charged, mainly my phone and my headlamp. Speaking of which, headlamp. I have this uh, black diamond headlamp, love it to death, works great, USB charge, phenomenal headlamp. I'll be able to keep it charged using those battery chargers. Uh, I always keep my platypus two to three liter water bag. This is my water bottle. I'm not bringing a hard plastic water bottle, I'm bringing this is my water bottle and I also have a bladder inside the pack. Also, to process water, I'm bringing a Sawyer kit. It's not the Sawyer Mini, it's the main size Sawyer. I have found that the Sawyer Mini just does not give me a fast enough flow rate. This one does a great job. I love this Sawyer. I advocate for Sawyer. I have a Sawyer sticker on the back of my truck. I think that they are awesome. They pay me nothing to say that, but <laughs> uh, I just 
from using the products. I love Sawyer. Simple, no moving parts, works great. All those pump filters that I've used, I've broken every single one I've ever used. Uh, I hate the taste of the iodine tablets. So, Sawyer filter all the way, my backup is boiling water. Now I also have a Lucy light in here. Um, I'm actually not gonna bring this along, I just need to toss this. Uh, I have my headlamp, that'll work just fine for light inside camp and around camp. Most nights I'm probably going to be going to bed by about dark anyway, uh, so I'm not worried about that. There's also an extra flashlight on the battery pack, so between my headlamp and the battery pack, and I'll have a little tiny flashlight on my keychain with my uh, truck keys, I I'm going to have all the light that I could possibly need and backups. A uh, small little uh, handkerchief with the high peaks on it, just to be in the spirit of camping in the Adirondacks. and my Sea to Summit titanium spork for reaching in and eating my meals out of Ziploc bags. That concludes all the outside of the pouch stuff. So, now let's move on in. Okay, so we are in the pack. First, I'm, I'm trying to keep the important things accessible, the things that I need to get out fast, especially while I'm hiking so I don't have to go digging through unnecessary stuff. Say I stop for lunch or I stop to go to the bathroom. Thing I wanna be able to access things like toilet paper. I wanna be able to access my lunch, my food. I wanna be able to access my med kit all pretty quick. So the first stuff that you find, I've got some wet wipes and toilet paper for taking care of bidnaz. I've got my food bag. Now, I am gonna be able to resupply twice on this trip. Once in Pasico, which is four days into the trip, and then once in Blue Mountain Lake, which is about eight days, eight to nine days into the trip. And I'll be able to resupply all the food that I'll need to carry will fit in this bag. I've dehydrated my own meals for breakfast and dinner. Lunches will be dry foods, so like Lara bars, crackers, bagels, and stuff like that. So. My food's actually pretty light, pretty small. Shouldn't be much of a problem. Doesn't take up a ton of space in my pack. Next, this is my med kit and personal items. I've got things like my toothbrush, I've got deodorant, I've got a full med kit. So toothbrush, camp soap, little washcloth, and med kit slash personals kit. So this has some blister care stuff. It's got triple antibiotic. It's got all my medicine that I have in a little baggie with rice to help keep the moisture away from it. But the key thing that I want you to hear about is this stuff right here. This is called silver sulfadiazine cream. Silver sulfadiazine cream, SSD or Silvadine. Silvadine is a burn cream. It has silver and it has zinc in it. I am clumsy. Stuff happens out in the woods. And when you're dealing with fire or with hot pots and alcohol stoves and stuff, you, you sometimes just accidentally touch something hot and you burn yourself. And burns can get infected really fast. This stuff is incredible. It takes care of those, those, those little camp burns. It takes care of them really well. And especially since I am surrounded with synthetic fabric. You see, synthetic fabric, when it burns, it melts. And it melts onto your skin. It's hard to get off. You can burn yourself just trying to get the stuff off your skin if it were to melt on your skin. A lot of campers end up in the emergency room because they set synthetic fiber on fire and couldn't get away from it and burn themselves severely. So if I get little burns uh, on accident, SSD. You have to get it prescription, but it is not a controlled substance. So feel free to go to your doctor and just say like, hey, I'm going out, this is what I did. I went to my doctor, I said, hey, I'm going out camping. Uh, I've used Silvadine in the past for minor burns. Uh, would you be willing to write me a prescription? Uh, no problem, happy to do it. That's my uh, personals, personal stuff bag. I just made it out of a little bit of excess material from my gear hammock. Now, uh, a couple pieces of clothing. I've got a uh, rain jacket. I've got a down warm puffy jacket. This also serves as my pillow for sleeping in the hammock. This is awesome, I love this, super light. Next is my regular clothes bag. This is all my extra clothes, holds down pretty small. I've just got extra underwear, some shirts, uh, a shirt to, to sleep in, extra socks. Um, I'm wearing the same clothes every day. My clothes are gonna get nasty. I'll try to wash them while I'm out there using the camp soap, but in general, uh, just a, a few extra items for me to be able to sleep in something dry while I hike in something McNasty. Now, we are on to my cook system. So this is just a bag that I made out of Reflectix. It opens up here at the top. It is a stand-up pouch, so it'll, it'll stand on its own. And 
what I do is I put a Ziploc bag full of my dehydrated meal inside this pouch and that dehydrated meal, uh, after I fill it with boiling water, seal up the Ziploc bag, seal that down, cooks in here in about 20 minutes. It reconstitutes and gets all nice and warm and tasty. So that is my cook bag. This is my cook kit. It's a zebra pot that I have Reflectix all around and you'll see more of the cook kit on the trip. Uh, inside here I've got a cup, I've got a windscreen, I've got a piece of aluminum foil to lay under things so I don't burn things with my, with my alcohol stove and I have a fancy feast stove that I made myself. I'll show you all this on the trip. That finishes the main pouch. Now I'm going to move us up to the bottom pouch here. We're getting close to the finish. Inside this bottom pouch is primarily my sleep system. So in this little bag, pretty tiny little bag here, uh, this is my gear hammock. It hangs under my hammock. You'll see that in more detail on the trip. My roving giant 11 and a half foot hammock. This is a Hammock Gear Incubator Zero down under quilt. Love it to death. It's probably a little bit overkill for this trip, but I'd rather be too warm than too cold. And my sleeping bag, which is an x light 40 degree synthetic sleeping bag. I'd love to have a down sleeping bag, just can't afford one yet. Uh, the under quilt was a higher priority than uh, a top quilt, but this works great. Will keep me nice and warm on a trip like this. And thus concludes all of my gear. Here's the deal, guys. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you following me and learning what I have to teach from camping or just coming along and learning alongside me. I'm looking forward to this trip. And I've been wanting to take on something more challenging than a, a, a weekend adventure for a while. The North Phillip Placid Trail is close to home for me because I grew up in Mayfield, which is the next town south of Northville. The Adirondacks, I, I always consider the Adirondacks home. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, never done something quite this long, but I'm gonna have you guys with me, so I'm not worried. And uh, we will keep you posted as I go. Th this trip is also a bit of a spiritual exercise for me. I find that being alone in the woods with God gives me a chance to clear my head and I'm glad you guys are going to be along with me. So hey, stay curious everybody. Roving Giant out. See you on the trail. <laughs>